As I was thinking about the world of Blood Red Road, the world beyond Silver Lake, the, the larger world into which Saba goes to look for her brother, I was thinking about a post-scientific world where um, there is no knowledge of um, how the world works, there's no uh, technology to speak of, anything is rough and rudimentary. So I was looking at um, Fraser's The Golden Bough, um, sort of primitive ritual, superstition, that sort of thing, and thinking about who takes over when societies collapse madmen and psychopaths and there are many examples of these in both uh, modern history and um, history throughout the ages. People generally uh, pick out the voice of Saba as the most distinctive aspect of Blood Red Road. Uh, I did try to write it in a much more traditional way to begin with. I was writing in third person, I was writing with a dual viewpoint. I then uh, went to a single uh, viewpoint, a first-person narration. She was a younger age. I tried all sorts of ways of finding her voice, and nothing really clicked, and I couldn't find my way into the story until I heard her voice speaking to me. And she did speak very directly and plainly, and basically I just wrote down what I heard. and. So I didn't really make an overt decision to write in dialect, if that's what you'd like to call it. Um, it's just her voice, and it's the best way to tell this story. In fact, it was my only way that I could find to tell this story. What I admire most about Saba is her courage, and closely aligned to that is her tenacity. She faces great danger and impossible odds, but all the time, her connections with her family and her growing connections with the outside world with her friends enable her to learn and grow. So although she hangs on to that core of herself, that strength, that knowledge of who she is and what she's after, she's willing to learn from her mistakes and to learn from other people. And I guess we can all learn something from that.